go over to India. We're going to talk about the CBDC project, which is now aiming to add up to 1 million users in the country over the next three months. They've already had their pilot program beginning uh, in about 15 countries with 13 banks participating. We've got 100,000 customers also participating over the last four months. They're looking to add about 900,000 users, uh, doubling public projections internally towards 1 million users. India has been on the forefront of CBDC plans. Uh, why they're doing that when they have such an anti-crypto stance? I think we could put our tinfoil hats on. I'll throw it on over to Adam for that thought, but they're definitely ahead of a lot of countries in the race to a CBDC. Yeah, thank you. So putting on my tinfoil hat, um, basically... <laughs> When you're looking at a country like India, uh, just as with China, you're looking at a country that historically and currently uh, maintains some level of capital controls. And they have those capital controls in place because they don't want money leaving their local system and going elsewhere. They're okay if money comes in from elsewhere, but they don't really want it leaving. And so when you look at the world of cryptocurrency, just like we were talking about with that first story today, again, North Korea could use this, right? Well, North Korea could use it also. Everybody in India could use it. And if even a small proportion of people in India use it, then suddenly the ability to control money coming in and money going out really kind of goes away. So that's one dynamic that's at play here. Another dynamic is that this is a race, right? Like we're still in the era right now where people are not like, oh yeah, hey, maybe I might want a money that isn't issued by a government that just crashed the last money that I used. And so like we're still in that grace period right now where that that lesson hasn't yet been felt by the vast, vast majority of people out there. So it's an opportunity for, especially for, again, countries like India to run as fast as they can ahead and try and, in, and try and put in a place, uh, a solution that looks like it offers many of the same advantages that you get from cryptocurrency, but which retains the centralized control that they really value quite a bit. Um, and need to continue to operate in the, the country in the way that they do. This is also largely true of China. China has been doing largely the same thing. They have a different set of challenges, but it's not too far different. So um, I'm very curious to see what happens here. I think that if we see significant uptake of central bank digital currencies here, that could be an indication that this is going to be a fight and that we will have uh, central bank digital currencies that are very much out there competing with the world of cryptocurrencies, even if it's not really a direct comparison. Um, and on the other side, if this doesn't go well, then I think you're going to see other nations have a lot of trouble getting adoption uh, for these types of systems unless they really crash the you know, non-tokenized part of their economy and kind of people are, are kind of scared into it. But uh, so, I mean, that, that's my read on the situation, but it is certainly complex. Uh, Jen? Yeah, I, the interesting part of the story to me was that they're looking at solving this challenge around um, making the currency offline, like creating an offline version. And we we saw in Nigeria with their digital currency, people are having a really hard time accessing cash right now, right? There's um, a limit to how much cash you can get out of the bank. A lot of people can't access the digital currency because they don't have a consistent access to internet in Nigeria. And it's just like an insane financial mess. It's interesting to see India trying to solve this problem for the people in their own country who don't have access to, to the internet. And once they do solve that problem, um, I, I, it, the one thing that I am happy about when I talk about CBDCs is that as this is rolled out inevitably in countries like Nigeria and in countries like India, people will at least have access to their funds. My other thought on this is that maybe this is what is needed for onboarding in crypto in the places that need it the most. Wow. Once, people get <laughs> Once people get comfortable using wallets, using digital currency, accepting digital currency as payments, and then understand that there's an alternative to the currency that their government has issued, the government that has maybe failed them in one or two ways, then maybe it will be easier for them to fathom a life using crypto. And that is my thought. Adam, I'm going to kick it back to you. Yeah. So uh, with regards to, you know, the offline transaction part of this, that's called cash. <laughs> like we have that. That's literally what but they're discontinuing. Cash is unavailable. But why is cash unavailable? I mean, like, that, I'm can, not defending that. I'm not defending that. <laughs> Sounds can, like it a little bit. You, you, can, you can go down these rabbit holes and... Um, you know, and what you find is that trying to do offline transactions with these types of systems, like 
it might be possible in theory, but the problem is is that you have double spend attacks where somebody can spend something one place and then that doesn't get reported and then you spend it somewhere else and the person who got... I mean, like this is literally what blockchains and stuff like that solve, but you still need that internet connection. Cash really is the solution for things that go beyond that, although people have certainly tried with paper wallets and you know Bitcoin bills and all kinds of other stuff. Like It's just, it's hard. Um, yeah, you know. Happy it Friday. is tough. It is tough, but it, it's also tough to see Jen being a uh, CBDC apologist on a show. <laughs> Don't I we only had one. say that. Don't I say that. With her. Yeah. Yeah. Thank wow. you, Adam. Thank you. It's about, it's about okay. behavior. It's, it's about behavior, right? Like if uh, again, Control like however behavior. people become comfortable with these new technologies, like at a certain point they're comfortable with the new technologies. I think the big question is, is once they're onboarded into these types of solutions, assuming that there aren't any gigantic problems with them, is there a reason to switch to cryptocurrencies for them? I think, again, that comes down to the behavior that we'll see over the next uh, you know, couple of years. 